Hi, Jeff Geisinger here, and welcome to the third installment of the Diva 4.0 tutorial series. In today's tutorial, we'll be looking at interior daylight visualizations, and we'll explore a few ways to use the camera component in the Diva Grasshopper interface to set up these visualizations. For this tutorial, we're using a Rhino file called the Example Office. It's similar to the file that we used in previous tutorials. It's a typical office floor with a core and a perimeter. It's about 48 meters long by 39 meters wide. But this file has more detail. It has furniture and interior partitions and curtain wall mullions. These more detailed objects are allocated on Rhino layers here, and the file is already set up for a Diva simulation. If I were to set it up again, I would click on the Location button and set a climate file, in this case Boston, and then set materials for the scene. You'll see that this file already has radiance materials assigned to the objects that I want to simulate. And it's important to have these set up because for this tutorial, we'll be using the Diva Grasshopper components with the option to include the Rhino scenes in the simulation. So you'll need to have Rhino objects with material assignments on them for that to work. To begin, I'll open the Grasshopper canvas and place the visualization component from the Diva 4.0 components tab onto the canvas. Just like before, I'll give it a name. So I'll put a panel on the canvas and change the name to interior and plug that into the name input. Next is the camera component. And so you'll see that the first component is a drop-down menu asking us what type of view we want to use. If we want to use the active Rhino viewport, a save view, or a manual view created from scratch, which we'll get into later. Let's use the active Rhino viewport for now. And so I'll set up a camera for a scene that I want to simulate. And I'll just use the perspective view to orient the camera into place. I want to go into the southeast corner of this office and I'll put myself in the third row and set up the scene this way. I will preview the camera widget so that I can see if the camera is intersecting with any objects in the scene and it looks like it might be. So in my perspective view I'll go ahead and move up a little bit and set it up that way. Now I'll go back to my grasshopper canvas and I'll set my image width and image height. You'll see that the default values are 400 pixels by 400 pixels. I'll go ahead and set that at 600 pixels by 600. And I will plug in the camera output to the camera input of the visualization component. Next, for the objects in the scene, I'll go ahead and leave the scene objects input empty for now. I won't be creating any custom object assignments in the Grasshopper Canvas. What I'll do is I'll include the Rhino scene in the simulation. And this input is set as false by default, and so I'll put a Boolean toggle onto the canvas and set it to true. Next, for the sky, the defaults are clear sky with sun and the Boston Logan Airport climate file. And also the time of the simulation is set here, and that default is January 1st at 12 noon. I'll go ahead and leave these defaults for this simulation. Same with the quality of the simulation. I'll leave the pull-down parameter as low for this setting. Next, I will put in a button to be able to run the simulation. And I'll go ahead and run it. Just as before, a DOS window will pop up showing the status of the simulation. It should be relatively quick because I'm using low settings. When the simulation is finished running, just like we did in the last tutorial, we can utilize the component outputs to preview the image in the Grasshopper Canvas. So I'll go ahead and in the Diva 4 Components tab, I will place the image viewer onto the canvas. And if I plug in the image output to the image viewer input, you'll see that the interior visualization that we ran is previewed here in this image viewer on the canvas. We can also place a panel onto the canvas and plug that image output into that canvas to see where Diva has saved this image. And you'll see that it is saved in my documents under my username under Diva Grasshopper Data Interior Visualization and then the name of the image, and then the suffix for the time in the simulation and the type of sun. And also, as you remember from the previous tutorial about exterior direct shading visualizations, 
I could use the false color output of this visualization component to also preview the false color mode within the image viewer component of the image that we ran. Now let's make a modification to the camera component and change the type of visualization that we just ran. Now you'll remember that we used the active Rhino viewport for the simulation. In Rhino, if we wanted to save this camera view that we created, if we went to named views and clicked save as, and called this perspective view interior, hit OK. So that view is now saved in the Rhino file. And in Grasshopper, through the camera component, if we zoom in here, if we use this drop down parameter list, you'll see that in addition to the active Rhino viewport, that saved camera that we just created now appears under this view option drop down parameter. So we will be able to use this view if we were to select this and change our active run of viewport to the plan view or change our perspective, we can still simulate this saved view by using this option in the drop-down parameter. So it's one, one other option that is available to users through the camera component. Another possibility that we, that we can do is to utilize view types within the camera component. So if, if I zoom in on the camera component and expose the hidden inputs, you'll see that there are a few different inputs here. One of them is the view type. I'll go ahead and click on the view type to make it active, exposed within the camera component. So the view type is basically going to decide whether or not you're using the default setting for the perspective view in the Rhino viewport or a few different options for setting this type of camera. You'll see that there's perspective view, there's parallel view, cylindrical view, and a few different types of fisheye views. These fisheye cameras are different ways to project the geometry within a sort of fisheye um, lens hemispherical type of image. Why don't I go ahead and set this to fisheye angular, and then I'll run the same simulation. What I'll do is I'll also change the maximum luminance range for the maximum luminance value for our false color image to make the colors appear a little bit better in the false color preview. And to do that, I'll actually zoom in on the visualization component. You'll see that there are also some hidden inputs within this component. So if I expand that and I go to the maximum false color scale, maximum, so I'll go ahead and click that, expose that value, and I will copy a panel and make that, based on this scale, I'll go ahead and make this maximum value about 3,000. and I'll plug that into the maximum input. So now I have my view type set up as fisheye angular and I change the maximum value of the false color scale. So let's go ahead and run this simulation. And when the simulation is complete, you'll see that a fisheye false color image will pop up in the image viewer. And the false color luminance value is set to the maximum scale that I, I had indicated in the input for the visualization component. And now I can go ahead and also, while the, the false color view is plugged into the preview, I can plug in the regular image and that will now only preview the regular image of the camera view converted to a, a, an angular fisheye projection for the scene that we had set up in Rhino. Now let's take a look at the other view type that we have in the camera component, the manual or create from scratch option in the drop down parameters. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and actually copy this set of components and paste it into the other portion of the canvas so that we can run a different image using the manual camera settings. Now I'll set this to manual create from scratch and now what this does is it gives us a few different options to basically set a camera point manually using the grasshopper interface to basically have numeric control over the camera properties and direction solely with the grasshopper compo components. So the first option that we'll have using this setting is the viewpoint. So this basically is asking for where our viewer is standing, where, where's the, the, the source of the camera, where's that point of view. There's a few ways to set this up. We can use the vector tools and we can actually create a, a point using XYZ coordinates and plug that into the viewpoint input. Another way to do this is to actually just reference the camera point that we used for our interior view. So to do this, I'll make sure that the 
widget is previewed, the camera widget is previewed for my interior perspective that I had set up, and it is. And in case it's not, I can right click on the, the view name and go to set camera and make sure that show camera is highlighted. And so what I'll do is I'll just drop a point parameter, a param into the grasshopper canvas. I'll right click on it and say set one point, and then I'll hover over to that camera viewpoint in the Rhino viewport in the plan view. And I'll zoom in on the front and right just to make sure that I also don't have project sele selected so that I'm making sure that I'm selecting not only the right point in plan, but also the right point in the Z coordinates so that it's actually in the viewpoint of where the user is standing. And so I'll go ahead and select that point. And you'll see that because this um, the preview is turned on for this component, that that point is previewed now in the Rhino viewports and I see that it is in the right spot. It's in the right spot in plan and the right spot in section. And then when I'm happy with that point, I'll go ahead and plug it into the VP input, which is the viewpoint input. The next input is the view direction. So this is basically a view direction vector. It's asking which way should the camera view point. And I'd like, it, I'd like for this point to be more or less, uh, this camera view to be more or less oriented in a similar way to how uh, my camera view was set up manually here. So I want it kind of pointing to the east, to the right. And so I'll just use a vector in the x direction. So I'll type in unit x. So this is a vector that's pointing in the x direction, and I'll go ahead and plug that into the VD input. That's going to be the way that my camera is going to be pointing. A way that we can check this is to use a component called the vector display. So I'll double click and type in vector display. And you'll see that this is a component that asks for an anchor point, which will be my camera point, and then a vector to preview. So I'll go ahead and preview the vector that I plugged in. Now if I zoom in a little bit closer here, you'll see that the vector that I'm previewing is pointing to the right. And so this is a way to just check to make sure which way your camera is pointing when using this manual camera option for the camera component. Now the next input is the view up vector. And I want to make sure that for this particular camera view that I'm creating, I want the view up to be positive Z. I want to create a view that's similar to the view that we were looking at before, where my eyes are essentially looking out towards the horizon and up in, in terms of the view would be the positive Z axis. So I'll go ahead and type in um, unit Z. So I'll use a Z vector to define that. I'll go ahead and plug that into the, the VU input. Great, now I've, I've basically defined a viewpoint and a view direction vector and a view up vector. And I'm going to go ahead and keep my view type as fisheye angular. And now I can run a simulation to see more or less what the camera view is going to be from this angle. So to do that, I'll press the button again. So you see that when the simulation is complete, the resulting image is taken from the viewpoint that we created in the direction that we had set in the manual create camera from scratch component. And you see that the viewpoint hasn't changed much. The angle shifted a tiny bit, and so that changed. But since we were using the same viewpoint and roughly the same direction, it is largely the same image. Now, while the use of the manual camera control might not seem to be that much more beneficial over creating a camera directly in Rhino, What's potentially powerful about this tool is that we can use the manual controls and the standard grasshopper components to run multiple cameras at once and create a kind of animation. So we'll walk through the steps to do that. So to run mul multiple cameras, we'll basically have to either move the viewpoint or create a list of values for the view direction or the view up. And so what we'll do is we'll actually create a rotating camera camera that will be a function of a, a list of values of view directions. So we'll create multiple view directions and animate those view directions to create a kind of string of images that are looking in different directions, rotating from the camera looking east and then rotating south and then looking west, uh, 180 degrees. And so as I'd mentioned, to do that, we'll plug in a, a few different view direction values. Right now we have one view direction value pointing right and it's creating one image. 
let's let's see what would happen if we were to rotate that view direction. So to do that, I'll type in the rotate component, rotate an object in a plane. I'll go ahead and just slide these components over so we have a little bit more real estate in the canvas. And I'll go ahead and I'll label this rotate view. Whatever input we put in here, base geometry, it will rotate. And then it is asking for a rotation angle in radians. So instead of inputting radians directly, I'll go ahead and input degrees and we'll convert those degrees to radians. And so there's a component that can do that. It's the radians component. So this radians component converts an angle specified in degrees to radians. So if I plug that into the angle component and I'll plug in the the initial vector into the G, the the geometry to rotate. Now we need to provide some kind of angle and degrees. So why don't I provide a panel as a demonstration and I'll make this panel value set to negative 15. Now I know that I want to use a negative angle because I want my camera view to rotate in a clockwise manner. And clockwise, the clockwise direction would be a negative angle value. And I can I kind of have a hint about that by looking at the rotate view component. You'll see that the rotation direction is in a counterclockwise manner, and the counterclockwise is positive. So because I want to run clockwise, I'll start with a negative value. And we can test that by just using this component right here to, to evaluate whether or not this is the right direction that we want. So I've rotated this vector, and so I'll go ahead and preview it using the display vector. I'm labeling these components so that I, as I start to build on these, on this grasshopper definition, I don't lose track of what is what. So then I'll go ahead and plug in, in instead of just the x vector in the vector display, I'll go ahead and shift input the rotated vector into the vector input of the vector display. So I get two vectors now previewed. And so you'll see that I rotated this initial vector 15 degrees clockwise, which is what I want. So the negative 15 value is, is what I want. And so I want to do this in a number of steps so that I can create a kind of incremental series of vectors that rotates in a clockwise fashion at 15 degree increments or negative 15 degrees increments to go all the way to 180 and look west. So one way to do this is I could turn this panel into a multi-line a multi -line list and manually input the increments that I want, starting from 0 and going to negative 15 to negative 30 and so forth. But there's a faster way to do that using the grasshopper components. I'll just go ahead and input a series component, which will allow me to create a series of numbers based on a starting value, an increment, and then a count. So my starting number in the series will be 0. And then my step size, I actually want my step size to be negative 15. So I can go ahead and plug in this value here. So it's negative 15. And then my, I want my count to be enough value so that it adds up to 180. And so I, that I could know that, I'll go ahead and see what the count is. So we, if we have a count of 10, this ends now at negative 135. I'll go ahead and put a number slider to increase that count incrementally um, until I get the number that I want. So I'll go ahead and I will plug that into the count and increase the count. And what I could also do is I can go ahead and, and plug in, before I do this, I can plug in the series output. So go ahead and plug the list into my degrees uh, component so that it's already plugging into the rotate view and it's being displayed. So not only can I check this in the list, I could also see how those vectors begin to build up in my view until I get it to be 180. So as I increase the slider, you'll see that at 13 values, so 13 cameras, each with a step of negative 15, it, my list now is ending at negative 180 degrees. And you'll see that the vector, the final vector is pointing west, which is, which is exactly what I want. So now if I utilize each of these angles as my view direction vector, the Diva visualization component will create a simulation based on each of these cameras. And then I can slide through all of those resulting simulations to get a kind of animation where, where my viewpoint is stationary and my view direction is spinning, is changing. So here's my vector display being previewed. What I'll do is now I'll go ahead and plug this 
list of rotated geometry, my my rotating view directions, and I'll plug that into the view direction input. So now instead of having just one view direction plugged into this input, I'll have this whole list of 13 directions. So I'll go ahead and plug in the geometry output into the view direction. And so now I have multiple cameras, 13 daylight cameras now, instead of one, being created using the Diva camera component. And that camera output is being input into the camera input of the visualization component. So there's 13 inputs here. And so now if I simulate this, it's not going to just simulate one image. It's going to simulate all the cameras and create 13 different images. So I'll go ahead and run that simulation. This might take a little while, so I will pause the tutorial and return when the 13 renderings are complete. When the simulations are done, I can put a panel on the canvas and I could indicate the list of resulting simulation images and where they're saved on the C drive. And so as with before, the images are saved in my documents in the Diva Grasshopper Data folder and then a subfolder for my project name. And if I scroll down this list, you'll see that there are 13, Im uh, 13 images saved from a uh, list from 0 to 12. But the image viewer is only showing the first image in this list, so I'll have to have a way to scroll through these different images. So I will make this a little bit bigger, and I will bring in a, a way to index through these images. So I'll bring in a list item component, list item, and this will allow me to take this list of images and index the list to have the output be just that one specific item that I want to index that I want to call out. And a good way to do this would be to just take a, a number slider. I'll use the same slider that, that we were using before for the to generate the series. And I will reduce the maximum number to 13 because I know that I have 13 total. And I'll start with, actually, I, I probably want this to be to be 12 because my last number is 12, even though it's the list starts at 0 and it ends at 12. So I'll go ahead and plug that into the index. And you see that if I plug that into the, into the panel and I scroll through the index, it will change the suffix of the that's automatically tagged on each image to tell me which camera I'm using. So starting from camera 1 all the way th through to camera 13. And if I also plug that into the image viewer, I'll go ahead and set this back to 0. And I scroll through this, you'll see that it will also spin the image. So it's basically animating through the different cameras that we created in the image viewer. I'll run through that one more time. So I'm sitting at my desk and I'm spinning around, looking at the south facade and then facing west and then turning around to the east. Now, if I wanted to make this an even finer animation, I can make the increment that we're using to define the series of angles even smaller. So instead of negative 15, I could use negative 5, or even negative 1 if I wanted to generate a large amount of images to make it really seamless. But this is a quick way to get a sense of the, the power of the custom com camera component as a way to create sort of dynamic images and take the Diva simulation potential a little bit further um, using the grasshopper components. Well, that about wraps things up for this tutorial. Please join me for the next one. Thank you.